solar system. We're halfway through. When we do Mars, and today is Mars, as I mentioned. So let's get into it. Oh, look, they have a little, little uh, diagram here to show you the size of Mars compared to Earth. As you can see here that uh, Earth is larger than Mars. Alright, let's do it. Mars is the fourth planet from the Sun and the last of the terrestrial planets and is around 27,940,000 kilometers from Earth. Huh? Okay. Next. The planet is named after Mars, the Roman god of war. It is known, pardon me, it was known to the ancient Greeks as Ares, their god of war. This is thought to be because of the blood red color of the planet which was also used by other ancient cultures. Chinese astronomers called Chinese astronomers call Mars the fire star, while ancient Egyptian priests called it her desher, meaning the red one. Okay. Cool. I don't really have much to say about that one. About either one of these, for that matter. So, <laughs> let's keep going. The land mass of Mars and Earth is very similar, despite Mars being just 15% the volume and 10% the mass of Earth. It actually has a similar land mass because water covers about 70% of Earth's surface. The surface gravity of Mars is about 37% the gravity found on Earth. This means that on Mars you could, in theory, jump three times higher than you could on Earth. Which means that you would finally be able to dunk. Good for you. I'm glad for you. Next. Only 16 of the 19 Mars missions have been successful. Well, that's not a great win rate. That's less than 50%. Um, beginning with the USSR's Mars NIC-1, which was launched in 1960, 39 orbiters, landers, and rovers have been to Mars. But only 16 of those missions were a success. In 2016, Europe's Exobiology on Mars program will search the planet for signs of Martian life as well as study the surface and terrain of the planet and map potential environmental hazards to future manned missions to Mars. Well, um, we are past 2016, so, uh, we have seen Mars footage already, so there you have it. Uh, success. Elon Musk is uh, still trying to go to Mars, so I guess we'll see how all of that goes, huh? Let's put some more facts on the screen here. Next. Pieces of Mars have been found on Earth. Okay, you mean without it being shot off from the surface of Mars by some Mars rover? Okay, let's see here. It is believed that trace amounts of the Martian atmosphere were within meteorites that the planet ejected. These meteorites then orbited the solar system for millions of years amongst the other objects and solar debris before eventually entering the Earth's atmosphere and crashing to the ground. The study of this material has allowed scientists to discover more about Mars before launching space missions. Okay, so, some meteorites got ejected from Mars, and years and years and years later, landed on Earth. So, how did they determine it was from Mars? Is it because they 
sent rovers to Mars, saw what the rovers had, then compared it to the stuff we have on Earth. I mean, how else would you do it? I don't know. Any astronomers in the comments? Well, watching, I should say. Want to comment? Next. Mars was once believed to be home to intelligent life. This came from the discovery of lines or grooves in the surface called canali by Italian astronomer Giovanni Schiaparelli. He believed that these were not naturally occurring and were proof of intelligent life. However, these were later shown to be an optical illusion. Sorry to break it to you, Giovanni, but, uh, you got duped. You got duped. It's unfortunate, but it happens to the best of us. Next, the tallest mountain known in the solar system is on Mars. Olympus Mons is a 21 kilometer high and 600 kilometer diameter shield volcano that was formed billions of years ago. Scientists have found a lot of recent evidence of volcanic lava, which suggests Olympus Mons may still be active. What else would be interesting to see? It is the second highest mountain in the entire solar system, topped only by the Rea Silvia Central Peak on the asteroid Vesta, which is 22 kilometers high. Can you imagine if a Mars rover was able to record the eruption of a Mars volcano? That would be crazy. Oh man, that'd be pretty cool. Next, Mars experiences huge dust storms, the largest in our solar system. This is due to the elliptical shape of the planet's orbit path around the sun. The orbit path is more elongated than many of the other planets, and this oval-shaped orbit results in fierce dust storms that cover the entire planet and can last for many months. And this is where Elon Musk wants people to go live. On a dust cloud planet. That doesn't seem fun at all. Not one bit. Next. The sun looks about half its size. Half it does from Earth when seen from Mars. What? Oh, let me read that one again. The sun looks about half its size. Half it does from Earth when seen from Mars. Okay, I'm officially stupid, because what in the world? Let's just keep going. When Mars is closest to the sun, in its orbit, the southern hemisphere points toward the sun, and this causes a very short but fiercely hot summer. In the north, it experiences a brief but cold winter. When the planet is farthest from the sun, Mars experiences a long and mild summer because the northern hemisphere points towards the sun. This is compared with a cold and lengthy winter in the south. I did not like reading that at all. I didn't like reading not one bit. Nope. Nope. And I'm not doing it again. So pause the video right here and read that as many times as you'd like because I've had enough. Moving on. With the exception of Earth, Mars is the most hospitable to life. A number of space missions are planning for the next decade to further increase our understanding of Mars, particularly when it has the potential for extraterrestrial life, as well as whether it may be a viable planet for a colony. Speaking of colonizing Mars, the movie The Martian is great. It's based on a book, which I haven't read, but the movie starring Matt Damon is Chef's Kiss. It's a great movie. I enjoyed it quite a bit. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Alright, next up. Martians, also known as extraterrestrials from Mars, are a common character in science fiction books and movies. 
this makes Mars one of the most popular and talked about planets in the solar system. Yeah, we've all heard of the term Martians, right? I'm sure. Everybody has, because Martians. Marvin the Martian from Looney Tunes, you know? I've seen people just refer to, like, Martians as just, like, extraterrestrials in general. Whereas Martians are supposed to come from Mars, but it's become more synonymous with just alien. So, let's keep going. It takes Mars 687 Earth days to orbit the Sun with its orbit radius of 227,840,000 kilometers. Wait a minute. Didn't we use this number already? Somewhere up top. Let me scroll up real quick. Hold on. Hold on. Where is it? Do, do, do. Yeah. 200. Okay. It was, it was 840 down below. It's 940 up here. 227. 940 versus 227. 840. Uh, let's see. If I can get back to it. Yeah. The one up above is distance from the sun, and this one is orbit radius. Okay. Alright, cool. Fine. Sure. Let's see if I can get everything here. I think this is it. This is the rest of them right here. Uh, yeah. Alright. Cool. Next. Mars is the only other planet besides Earth that has polar ice caps. The northern cap is called the Planum Boreum, with Planum Australia in the south. Water ice has also been found under the Martian ice caps. This is one of the reasons why they think Mars may be hospitable, because of the water that, uh, has been found. Very interesting. Very interesting. Could you be living on Mars soon? Well, not soon. Because scientists have to go there first, but who knows? Maybe in a hundred years, people from Earth will be living. I don't know how long it'll take to do this stuff, but I imagine a long time because they've planned so many trips of different things that have been canceled and put off, so it's going to take a long time to get to Mars, so I don't know if any of us are going to be living on Mars in our lifetime unless some sort of crazy super advancement in technology happens here within the next decade, you know? Like all of a sudden we discover a way to produce unlimited clean energy or something like that that's super fast and efficient where we can power our cars by, like, a teaspoon of a thing, and then the cars can drive for 100,000 miles without needing another refuel. Now, if we were to find something like that, then maybe that'll speed up the process, but I'm going off the rails here. Let's get back to the list. <laughs> uh, where were we? Here we are. Okay. Next. Mars has seasons like Earth, but they last twice as long. This is because Mars is tilted on its axis by about 25.19 degrees, which is similar to the axial tilt of the Earth, 22.5 degrees. Similar, but more. So, that's why the seasons are much longer. Right? Sure. Next. The orbit of Mars is the most eccentric of the eight planets. This means it is the least circular orbit path of the planets. We did read earlier that its orbit is more of an oval, right? Yeah. In this case, uh, eccentric has nothing to do with someone's personality. Next. The two moons of Mars, Phobos and Deimos, were written about in the book Gulliver's Travels by author Jonathan Swift 151 years before they were discovered. Um, so, the 
Jonathan Swift just make something up? And then they decided, oh, okay, since you wrote about this, we'll just use those names. I don't know. I don't know. Next, uh, and this is the last fact for the video. Mars does not have a magnetic field. Although there are some scientists that believe it did have a magnetic field somewhere around 4 billion years ago. Well, what in the world happened to it? What happened to it? No. Here's, I guess, what's supposed to be a picture of Mars' surface. There are more facts on this page, but they're like just long paragraph facts, so if you want to read those, you can, you know, click on the link and uh, read the rest of those, but that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and or listening. I really appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Hey, why not leave a like and subscribe and all that good stuff? It's appreciated. Or, hey, if you really dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. I won't be mad at you. Also, whoever is listening to the end, this just popped into my head. Has anybody heard from Jerem? Is Jerem okay? I don't know anything about Jerem other than they used to comment on the channel a bunch and I have not seen or heard from them in months. Well, to be fair, I haven't seen any of you, but I haven't heard from Jerem in months. I hope Jerem is okay. Jerem, if you're still listening to these videos or watching them and you just haven't commented, I hope you're doing well, man. Um, and some other people, too. Man, like Jimmy. Jimmy, are you okay? I believe his name was Jimmy. There's a bunch of... I'm missing some people, but hey, I was gone for a long time, too. So, you know, probably just not showing up in your feeds anymore. I just hope everybody's doing well. Um, hey. But regular says still pop up. Like cheese and... Uh, Clarice, hey, appreciate you all. Okay, there's more of you. I know there's more of you. I'm so sorry if I'm not mentioning your name. I love you all. Just thank you. Thank you so much for continuing to support. It is greatly appreciated. Okay, cool. I hope everybody's well is basically what I'm trying to get at. All right, that's it. I just want everybody to be happy and healthy and safe. That's all. Okay, remember, be kind to yourself.